morning students uh, in the previous classes we discussed about uh, electric field uh, dipole uh, electric field due to the dipole and potential due to the dipole and what will uh, happen in the dipole is placed in uh, uniform electric field like what is the arc acting on this and how to calculate potential energy of the dipole and we discussed all these uh, uh, concepts there now uh, today we will discuss uh, first of all what will happen when the dipole is placed in non uniform electric field and how to calculate the force acting on the dipole when it is placed in uh, non uniform electric field so first let us consider the uh, dipole is placed in non uniform electric field is force acting on a dipole placed in non uniform electric field that means force acting we discussed already what is a uniform electric field and what is non uniform electric field so non uniform electric field in the sense the field varies either in magnitude or in direction or it may uh, change both magnitude and direction from point to point if it is remain same both magnitude and direction of the electric field remain same both in magnitude and direction then we call it as a uniform electric field so now this is non uniform electric field so for example i am taking this uh, dipole is placed in a non uniform electric field like this this is a non uniform electric field here so the direction is different in different directions now suppose if a dipole is placed along this direction here this is a dipole and making here so uh, let us take the charge separately here like suppose this is say one charge q plus q and this is minus q charge here and i am taking here electric field is suppose say if i consider it as e then here the force uh, field will be e plus d e you may consider here or e plus delta e you may consider here that means i am taking that field is changing when you, when you are traveling from negative from the position of the negative charge to positive charge And so that it is a non-uniform electric field. Here the field is we are taking it as E, and here the field is uh, E plus delta E will be right here. And so now we have the force acting on the positive charge, and force acting on the dipole moment is right as. So force on positive charge minus force on the negative charge because the directions are opposite each other. So now here we can write this as force acting on the positive charge is nothing but uh, E plus delta E into Q minus and this value will be E into Q. The force acting on this negative charge will be along this direction. Force acting on the negative charge and the force acting on the positive charge will be in the direction of this field. And so now here uh, so therefore I can write this as uh, Q into delta E we can write. Right? So now here I am expressing this value as suppose here I am taking this uh, some L as the length of this dipole here. For example, here I am taking L as the length of the dipole, and therefore I can write this as uh, Q into this delta E by delta X into A. So that we are expressing like this. We are multiplying with some length and dividing with some length here. And now this Q into L uh, will become the P because here itself we are taking L itself as the length of this dipole here. So then Q into L itself is a, a dipole uh, moment here. And so I can write this as P into delta E by delta X. Actually, this is nothing but we call it field gradient. So in general, we can express it as. Uh, so we express that force as P into do E by do R or do X. We can write here. Or let us write it down so as a function of this x here. So I am writing in terms of gradient d e by d r. So with the when the field is varying with the r, then force can be expressed like that. And actually, you can also write it this instead of this, you can also write it another way. That means uh, so another way of expressing this we can write as We know already this potential energy we can write as uh, so the potential energy U is equal to minus P E cos theta. 
and one more point that is regarding the unit non-uniform being produced by a point charge. So here suppose this Q is a point charge here then a dipole is placed here. You may consider how in any direction. Now we are placing a small dipole uh, in the field created by this point charge here. Now suppose I am taking this dipole is placed like this. Suppose to say this is the negative charge and there is a positive charge here. A small dipole is placed there along the direction of the field here. Here we know the field direction will be along this direction. And so now force acting on the uh, this positive charge we can write as like E1 into Q and here the force will be E2 into Q. And we know this electric field will be a point charge will depend on the distance. E is inversely proportional to R square. And so at this point the field will be greater, magnet, greater in magnitude and compared to this, right? And so that here net force acting on the dipole is not zero in this uh, orientation. Now suppose if I am considering like this, if you consider that like, like dipole is placed here, let us take this as positive charge and this as a negative charge here. Now there is a point charge. Now again electric field due to this charge will be along this direction at this point and electric field here also along this direction here. So therefore here the force is say along this direction but here the force is attracted to force like this since it is a negative charge. Now the forces are equal in magnitude. Here and here electric field magnitude will be same because this distance and this distance will be same here, right? So electric field is equal in magnitude but the force directions are uh, uh, not same. So if you resolve them into components then you will get the conclusion here. The net force acting on the dipole will be there along this direction. Because these two components will cancel with each other. Here, if we resolve this F into component, so here you will get like F cos theta along this direction if this angle is theta, and this will be F sin theta. And similarly, for this F, if we resolve this into components, then this angle will be theta we are taking. So this is F cos theta, this is F sin theta you will get. And so this F cos theta components will cancel with each other. And these two F sin theta, here F sin theta components will be uh, added together. So that the net force acting on the dipole will be along this direction. So that means if the dipole is placed in non-uniform electric field produced by a point charge, then you can conclude that net force acting on the dipole is non-zero, is always non-zero in the uniform field produced by a point charge. But the torque may or may not be zero. You can see in both examples. In this example, torque is zero because these two forces are acting away from each other. But here if you are taking here also the torque acting on this will be zero. If you are changing the orientation, torque may not be zero here. So that depends on this. Uh, and here actually these two, uh, the torque due to these two forces, these two components will be zero. These two components will produce a uh, like a uh, clockwise torque here about the center of the dipole. And so that means now torque may or may not be zero. That depends on the orientation of the dipole. But here the dipole is placed in non-uniform field produced by a point charge. Then Net force acting on the uh, dipole is non zero. So, write that as the next point in that node. So, write that. When the dipole is placed in non uniform electric field, when the dipole is placed in non uniform electric field produced by a point charge, produced by a point charge. Then net force acting on the dipole, then net force acting on the dipole is non-zero. Is non-zero. But torque acting on the dipole, torque acting on the dipole may be zero. Or maybe non zero. Maybe zero or maybe non zero. Let us find some problems based on this uh, force calculation. Let us take this as an infinite kind of charge field. This tends to be infinity having this standard density lab. Now we are placing the dipole here. So now different orientations of their here. A small dipole is placed like this. A 
small dipole of like the dual dipole moment P is placed at a distance of R from this. So write it as the problem. A small dipole of length dual. Small dipole of length dual. In brackets, you can write that this L is very much uh, sorry. Small dipole of length dual is placed near by a. Is placed near by a. Infinite line of charge. Infinite line of charge having linear charge density lambda. Having linear charge density lambda at a distance r. At a distance r. In brackets, now right, this r is very much greater than this o. Okay. The distance r, as shown in the following cases, as shown in the following cases, now find the force acting on the dipole. Find the force acting on the dipole. In each case, this is the right one going direction here. This is our case. Two. Case one is like this. The dipole is placed parallel to this infinite line. And case two is it is placed like this perpendicular. But in both the cases, uh, the dipole and the line of charge are lying in the same plane. Now in the third case, I am taking like this. Suppose this is the infinite line here, then actually the dipole will be like this. The dipole is like this in the sense it is uh, perpendicular in plane. That means now here the dipole is like this. If the line of charge is uh, like this, then the dipole is placed like this. If suppose say that this dipole is placed along this y-axis, uh, line of charge is placed along the y-axis, then it is placed along this z-axis like this. Both are perpendicular to each other. So that way uh, we will discuss it later. So these are the three cases here. This is case three. So in these two cases, both the dipole and line of charge are in the same uh, plane. So now let us consider uh, how this. Uh, force acting on the dipole in each of these cases here. Suppose I am taking this first case now. So as the dipole direction is given like this, I am assuming suppose say some uh, negative charge is present here and some positive charge is present here, right? And so now clearly in this case we can observe that this as this is an infinite line of uh, charge, the field at the location of this uh, minus q and the plus q are same in magnitude. Because we know the electric field due to this line of charge is lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r at a distance r if we consider, right? That is the electric field uh, produced by infinite line of charge. Now here you can observe that the distance of this minus q from this line of charge is r and the distance of this plus q from the line of charge is also r. And so that the electric field strength acting at the positive and negative charges will be same. So here also that E will be there along this direction and here also same E will be there along this direction here. And so now here the force acting on the dipole will be like this, F1 and force acting on the dipole this charge will be F2 like this, negative charge. And therefore the net force in this case is, suppose I am writing F1 minus F2 I am writing here. So which is A into Q minus e into q. Therefore, you can write this that e value is same, which is given by this expression here. So, the net force acting on the dipole is zero in this case. Is it clear? 
when the dipole is placed at parallel to this line of charge such that they are hanging in the same plane the distance of positive charge and the distance of negative charge from this line of charge will be same and so automatically the electric field will be same and now the force will be equal and opposite and so they cancel with each other so that that field the net force acting on the dipole is same so that is the point which we mentioned previously as well when the dipole is placed in non uniform electric field now it is a non uniform electric field only because the due to this line of charge the electric field will be different at different points and it is different at different distances so it is inversely proportional to r here and so now the field is a uh, non uniform field so when the dipole is placed in non uniform field here the force acting on the dipole is zero so we mentioned it may be zero may not be zero here this is the example for where the dipole uh, uh, experience is zero force in non uniform electric field right now let us come to this uh, second example second case here now the dipole the dipole is placed in perpendicular to this line of charge so when this place is perpendicular to this line of charge here now we can simply observe that the field is varying when you are moving from this say negative charge to positive charge because as we discussed previously the distance of the negative charge and the distance of positive charge is different here and so definitely some field is varying and so we can calculate that force by using our previous formula and so that i am writing here for case 2 the calculation of this force so now here uh, the e value we can write as electric field at the distance we can write as lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r and force acting on the dipole is so force acting on dipole we can express it as f is equal to p into de by dr we can write right and so this is nothing but f is equal to p into d by d uh, sorry dr of e value and substituting here lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r and therefore this can be expressed as this is minus uh, p lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught into r square that means 1 by r differentiation that is minus 1 by r square you get so this force that indicates that the negative side indicates that the force between them will be an attractive force because here negative charge is closer to the line of charge and so net force will be along this direction here so that is the conclusion what we are getting here and so the magnitude of force if i write here p lambda by 2 pi epsilon not r square so if the dipole is placed like this then the force will be attractive force if we reverse the dipole direction then the force will be uh, like uh, repulsive force will get here in, in terms of potential i think right here we need to write actually p into de by dr into cos theta we need to write if we derive it from the potential energy as we discussed previously we will get that uh, potential energy is minus p cos theta and f is equal to minus d u by dr so if we substitute here p cos theta you get So now in that formula, for example, if you consider this, now the field and dipole are in the same direction, so cos zero you get. So that here you get the negative sign here. And if it is uh, cos one eighty, then you will get this uh, positive sign there. That means if the dipole is reversed like this, then cos one eighty you get, which indicates the repulsive force. So whether the force is attractive or repulsive, simply you can identify whether negative charge is close to the line of charge or positive charge is close to the line of charge, right? If the negative charge is closer, then automatically the force between them will be an attractive force. If positive charge is closer, then automatically the force between them will be a repulsive force. So that we can decide the magnitude of the, whether it is attractive or repulsive. So this is the magnitude of this force now. So that is the second case. Now we can observe that it is a non-zero force. So non-zero force is acting on this dipole and is placed in a, a non-uniform electric field. Now let us come to the third case here. So first of all, we should understand how this dipole is placed in it. So again, I am saying that when this line of charge is placed like this, now the dipole is placed here. Line of charge is vertical. Now the dipole is placed perpendicular to uh, this like this. Now this is the second case also perpendicular only, but that perpendicular will be like this. Both are lying in the same plane. Now here both are lying in a perpendicular plane here. This is along this direction, and now the dipole is placed like this. That is of third case. Now let us see how we calculate this force in the third case.
right? That means I am taking this line of charges like this. I am taking line of charges perpendicular to this plane, and the dipole is placed like this. That is the situation what we are measuring here. And so now we are applying the electric field due to this line of charge at this point will be along this direction. And so uh, force is always in the same direction. That force you can write as E. Now the field due to this will be along this direction, and so that force will be along this direction. Force acting on the negative charge is opposite to this, so which is again E. And by the secondary, you can say that this distance is nothing but say under root of uh, R square plus L square, right? And so uh, these two distances are same, and so these magnitude of electric field at this point and magnitude of electric field at that point both are equal. Only. And so now suppose I am taking like that. This angle is theta. I am taking here, so that this angle will be theta. So we can take this angle as theta here, right? Now let us resolve these forces into components here. So here we need to cancel the uh, right. This angle is theta here. So I am writing this E Q value here. So this angle is theta. Now I can write this component as F cos theta. And along this, this will be F sin theta. Similarly, here this component is f cos theta like this, and this component will be f sin theta like this. So now clearly we observe that this f cos theta and this f cos theta both are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, so they cancel with each other. And only we need to add this these two terms here, f sin theta plus f sin theta. So first I am writing this electric field here. So lambda by 2 pi x log naught into the distance of that point is under root of r square plus l square. We need to write, and therefore this net force acting on the dipole we can mention it as 2 f sine theta. We can write. Let us substitute those values here. So it is nothing but 2 into f is e cube into sine theta. We need to write. Now let us substitute the e value and the e sine theta value by using this diagram. And so 2 into e value is lambda into uh, q by this is 2 pi epsilon naught into under root of uh, r square plus l square. That is e q into sine theta. We can write by using this diagram, right? And so that is l by opposite side by l by l, which is r square plus l square. We can write. Therefore, this we can express it as uh, 2 into L into Q. That is nothing but our dipole moment because here we are taking the dipole length as 2L here, right? And so I can write this as P into lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught into R square plus L square. Since we are using this uh, 2 into 2L as P, and here the uh, But L is very small when compared to R. Therefore, this net force can be approximately taken as P lambda by 2 pi epsilon on R square. We can write here. So this is a force acting on this. That means I'm taking this L square will be negligibly small when compared to that of R square. So L square value I'm neglecting here. Then this is the expression for force acting on the dipole here. When this place is there, like this, perpendicular to the line of charge, the perpendicular plane. So, like that, we can calculate the uh, force acting on the dipole when it is placed in the non-uniform electric field. So, in the non-uniform electric field, force may be zero, force may not be equal to zero. That depends on that uh, how the dipole is placed there. Now the dipole is placed like this, for example. 
charge so that is this negative charge and positive charge here this is the direction of this electric field we know already we discussed already some torque will act on this so if the dipole is like this then the torque is here now it is displaced slightly to this position here to the small angle theta and then release it if it releases from this position then what will happen because of this torque automatically the dipole will comes back to its uh, into the direction of this field here right now that torque is nothing but our storing torque whenever you are displacing the dipole from the direction of the field like this then automatically it will comes back to this direction here and actually when you release from that position it will execute some harmonic motion it loss there like this If the theta is small, then you can cancel it as well. Uh, simple harmonic motion here. So let us write this. That means we are assuming here, like this. We are cancel a dipole of dipole moment P is placed in. Cancel it. A dipole of dipole moment P is placed in uniform electric field. Uniform electric field of intensity E. Uniform electric field of intensity E. If the dipole is slightly displaced from the direction of the field and release. If the dipole is slightly displaced from the direction of field and release, then it executes simple harmonic motion. Then it executes a section. And the post time period can be calculated as follows. Post time period can be calculated as follows. So restoring torque, like the minus of tau is equal to minus P E sine theta. This torque expression we already derived. Here we are naming it as restoring torque because it restores the position of the dipole here because of this torque pulling. The dipole will again comes back here. The dipole is released here. The torque acting on the dipole will be like this. So automatically it comes back here. And we know this torque we can write as I alpha. This is equal to minus P into sin theta. Therefore alpha is equal to minus P by I into sin theta. We can write. So if theta is small. Then sine theta can be replaced with theta, and therefore this alpha is equal to minus P by I into theta. We can write here. And so from this you can observe that this will be our condition for this SHM here. That means uh, if angular acceleration is directly proportional to the negative dis negative angular displacement, then we can say that uh, motion will be simple harmonic motion, which is similar to that of our A is proportional to minus x. In a section, and so now here this alpha is an angular section. This will be so alpha is equal to minus P by I into theta. The reason is that alpha is proportional to the minus theta we can write here. And so from this what we can conclude is the motion will be simple harmonic motion, and it will be simple harmonic motion only when theta is small. So if theta is not small, you can't replace the sine theta by uh, with the sine theta with theta. So if sine theta still if sine theta is there continuing in that expression, then you can't call it as a simple harmonic motion. It will be just a periodic motion. We can say that. Is it clear? So when the theta is small, then it executes the simple harmonic motion. So compare with uh, alpha is equal to minus omega square theta. Therefore, omega is equal to under root of uh, p by i will get. From this sine theta t is equal to two pi by omega. We can write here. And if we substitute there, uh, then you get this sine theta of oscillation of this dipole will be two pi in the other side of uh, i by t. So this expression for sine theta of this dipole here. See once again in this two pi into i by t, where i is the moment of inertia of this uh, uh, dipole. About its center of oscillation, and P is the dipole moment of the dipole, and E is the intensity of uh, electric field present in the region. So those are the that is the simple expression for this. As we uh, completed the section in the first year, uh, uh, 
R syllabus. So then this calculation will be very easy for you. Just we are writing this term, this expression just now we completed. So then just we are writing this term is equal to I alpha. That is equal to minus P sin theta. And then we are replacing this sin theta with the theta. So that this is our direct passage equation. And from that you will get the omega value. From that you can write the time period calculation. Right? So it is the time period of this uh, dipole that is uh, oscillating in a uniform electric field. So these are the two line of charges here having this charge density say lambda. This is say plus lambda, this is minus lambda. And its length of this uh, rod is L. This length is L. And those are connected by a light. Uh, light uh, rods, light rods in the sense, you know, massless rods. Now this total arrangement is suspended in an electric field, uniform electric field like this. It is this electric field is lying in the space itself. Now it is slightly displaced and then uh, released here. Now it executes a section that the dipole. Now it will behave like a dipole. That uh, because two line two rods are having opposite charges here, this is positively charged. And this is negatively charged here. So those two rods will uh, uh, form a dipole here. And so that uh, dipole will execute. That means here this is one rod for example, this under rod this is lying in this way, now the electric field will be like this. And so now we are displacing it slightly from the direction of this electric field, then it execute the simple harmonic motion here. So that we need to calculate here, that uh, uh, time period of oscillation we need to calculate. So write it follow. Two identical rods, each of mass L and length L each of mass M and length L of having uniform charge density uniform charge density plus lambda and a minus lambda that means on one, one rod it is plus lambda other rod it is minus lambda these two rods are these two rods are connected by a light connected by two light rods connected by two light rods of length D
and I will of i by 3 into e with m by t. So that is our formula. So just we need to apply this formula here directly. Means same derivation when it is displaced slightly from the direction of field by theta, the torque acting on the dipole is 3 e sin theta. The same calculation we need to write, so directly I am applying the formula. And so now here we need to write about this thing first. So this P is nothing but our actually we need to write Q into distance. So the distance between them is D we are taking here, distance between those two charges. Now P is nothing but charge present on this magnitude of charge present on this one of the one. So I can write it as lambda into L. So lambda into L into D. So this is the field acting, uh, sorry, dipolement of this type of field. And next we need to write this uh, dipolement of the system here. So dipolement of the system I can write this as so, in moment of inertia of the system, we need to write I is nothing but. So, moment of inertia of the system uh, about the symmetrical axis. Now, the object is uh, like this, for example, this is the direction of the uh, field like this. Now, we are displacing, that means, suppose say this is the direction of the field, for example, if you are taking, then uh, our dipole uh, moment will be like this. This is suppose say positive, negative, positively charged, and this is a negatively charged. Then this will be equilibrium position. Now from this position we are displacing it slightly like this. We are displacing it slightly like this and then we are releasing here. Then it executes simple harmonic motion like this. This plane uh, will execute simple harmonic motion like this. And so that it is executing SHM about this point here. This is our axis of rotation here. So about the axis of rotation we can write its moment of inertia here. It's about this axis we need to write here. About this axis the system will execute the simple harmonic motion. So about the axis the right. ML square by 12 plus MD square by 4. This is ML square by 12 plus MD square by 4 about this axis. This we can write this as equal to, right? Because such a two rods are there. That means our actual arrangement will be like this. The equal length is initially parallel to this. This is our negative charge that is cancelled, this is a positive charge here. These two are connected here. Now this is the direction of this electric field. So initially the dipole moment is also the same direction here. Now what I am saying is from this we are displacing here. Now suppose it is displaced slightly to this position here. So that now the dipole moment will be like this, whereas the electric field will be like this. Now this is our positive charge and this is an negative charge here. Right? So if you displace the rod from this, now I am saying it will rotate about this axis. Right? This P will again comes back to this direction and so it should rotate about this axis here. The system is rotating about that axis. So about that axis, now I am writing the moment of inertia of the system here. So that is for one rod I am writing like about this axis in the sense, about this axis and perpendicular to this plane in the sense. So I can write this as ML square by 12 plus MD square by 4 we can write. So into 2 because 2 such are also there. So I can write this as ML square by 6 plus MD square by 2 by multiplying with the 2. Therefore this time period we can write as T is equal to 2 pi into this value is ML square by 6 plus MD square by 2 by P into L into D so P value is lambda into L into D into E you can take LCM and you can simplify it so M if I take common then it will be L square plus 3D square by 6 lambda L into D into E That will be the expression for this time and of oscillation of such a and I hope. Next we does see such a one more uh, similar problem. Yes, sir. 
we took the data from this point. Now in each place in your uniform electric field like this. And it is having uh, some this part is carrying some positive charge here, some positive charge in steel lambda. And then this part is carrying some negative charge here, minus lambda. Now it is placed in such a uniform electric field of density like this. Now it is slightly displaced and it is uh, oscillating. Then we need to write time period of oscillation of such a system. Similar problem. But here first we need to write, uh, we need to calculate this uh, dipole moment here because it is a continuous dipole now. Previous also continuous only, but we can write that easily because positive and uh, negative charges are separated by finite distance. And so now here it is, uh, write this problem. A circular arc of mass m and radius r. A circular arc of mass m and radius r, which is subtend a total angle of rotator at its center. Which is subtend a total angle of rotator at its center. He is placed in. He is placed in uniform electric field of intensity v. Uniform electric field of intensity E. Half of the arc is having linear charge density plus lambda. Half of the arc is having linear charge density plus lambda. Another half is having minus lambda. Another half is having linear charge density minus lambda. If it is slightly displaced and released, if it is slightly displaced and released, then find its time period of oscillation. Then find its time period of oscillation. So same problem, just, just we need to calculate this dipole moment here. So from the dipole moment, I am taking the calculation like this. So here I am taking a small element here. This angle is for example 5, so that this is d5. And such an identical element I am taking here. So this is plus b q then cancel and then this will be minus b because they decide input charge is there here. This side also charge is there here. And so now for this small element we can write the dipole moment is for small element uh, dp is equal to so dq into the distance between them we need to write here. This distance between them. So by using this triangle we can write that this is r sin phi and this is also r sin phi. So I can write this as 2 r sin phi. Now the dq value we can write as q by now this charge, this length of the arm we need to write. So that is r theta. This is the charge per unit length. This charge q is distributed in this length of it, right? So it's the length of this arm we can write as r theta. That is charge per unit length into length of this element we can write as r into d phi into 2r into sin phi. And so now we can write this as uh, r we can cancel here. So finally I can write this as 2q by 2q r by theta into sin phi d phi. So this is our d d value. So for continuous charge distribution, we solved already some problems. So uh, to calculate the total dipole moment for the whole uh, system, we need to verify whether the dipole moment due to all the elements is in the same direction or in different direction. So if the dipole moment direction is nothing but from negative charge to positive charge, so along this direction here, right? So due to all such elements, the dp will be in the same direction, of course only you get. And so you can integrate this expression directly. So now this phi value varies from 0 to theta, right? 
because from here to here we need integrate. So here it is here it is zero, and here it is means three. So therefore it is two q r by theta into sin phi r will be minus cos phi. Limits are from zero to phi. Therefore this diagonal I can write as two q r. This value is nothing but this lambda value is given here, so I think we can substitute the lambda value. Finally, we will substitute that. This value will be one minus cos phi combined. So therefore, this p is equal to now this q value is actually here it is given in terms of lambda only. So this value can be replaced with the lambda value. And so for that, we can write the value as. Uh, Two r square into lambda into one minus cos uh, theta. You can write here. So this is from zero to theta limits. Right? Just this q value, uh, this lambda value is nothing but uh, q by r theta. So q is equal to r theta into lambda. We are writing here. So if we substitute that value, theta will be cancelled. Here all into r r square into theta r square into lambda. So it is our now diagonal. So that diagonal now we can directly use in our uh, formula there. And therefore, this uh, time term calculation we can write as two pi into the root of i by t. So we will directly i value we can substitute here. This is nothing but i by uh, m r square we can write here because it will rotate about this uh, center only. When it is rotating about its center, we can write that the moment of inertia of the uh, circular arc is same as that of our uh, That means uh, we need to displace like this. Our diagonal end will be now in this situation. Our diagonal end will be parallel to this evil. So we need to displace the diagonal like this. About this arc, we need to about this center only. We need to displace like this. And so moment of inertia about the center, this point only we need to write here. Center of this blue circle. And so when it is the uh, center of the blue circle, we can write this moment of inertia as m r square into this t value is two r square lambda into one minus cos theta. Into e, so this value we need to write here. Therefore, I can write this expression as two pi into the r square will be cancelled. So m by two lambda into one minus cos theta into e. So this is our expression for this uh, time period in that case. So like that we can calculate the time period in any case. Whenever time period is given, then we have this. Whenever such a dipole is placed in uh, any form. So that is our time period calculations. That means we need to think about this p value calculation. So if p is given for you, then the problem will be easy. Directly can substitute in there. Then the moment of inertia we need to calculate. That we know already. We discussed with that uh, moment of inertia calculations in the rotary motion uh, topic. Yes, of mass m, and the total length of the dipole is 
if the dipole is displaced slightly and released if the dipole is like displaced slightly and released then find the standard of oscillation then find the standard of oscillation and also find also find the amount of worked in the amount of worked in in rotating the dipole in rotating the dipole from given position to given position to three an angle uh, given position to three an angle 180 degrees an angle 180 degrees so solve the problem same process the just here we need to write the electric field at that point so which we discussed already we need to do this solid sphere kq by r square we need to write that means here kq by x square that just that field we need to substitute there and then next let us write this uh, force between two dipoles
so it is two k p one p two by means its differentiation is nothing but it will be like uh, writing here minus three by r power four you will get and therefore it is f is equal to minus six k p one p two by r power four so this is a force field with those two dipoles. Then the negative sign will indicate attractive force between the two dipoles there. So the dipoles will attract to each other. And so now here we can write this expression as. Uh, so I am writing this model as here. Six k p one p two by r power four. You may mention that this value attractive force. So this is a force between two dipoles when they are placed like. That means how to say attractive force in the sense you can cancel the charges actually here. This is negative charge and this is a positive charge here. Or you can you can explain like this. So this is electric field produced by this. So in this, if I can say the negative one positive charge is like this. This is the negative charge and this is a positive charge for this dipole. Now the electric field at the negative charge is uh, greater in magnitude because when you are moving away from the dipole, this electric field goes on decreasing with R cube inversely proportional to R cube here. So then the negative charge is closer to this dipole here. We have strong field will be there, so automatically we get strong force will be there when compared to the positive charge, force on the positive charge, and so net force will be directly like this. So that is the significance of the negative sign. It is an attractive force. The force between the two dipoles is attractive force. And so here you should also remember this: this force is force between two dipoles is inversely proportional to this R power four here. So that also should remember. Whereas between two point charges, we mentioned that force is inversely proportional to R square. But here it is inversely proportional to R power four. So this is the case one. So let us see the second case. Same procedure when the dipoles are placed in the parallel to each other. So here this uh, minus is there here already. So 
3k d1 3k d2 by r power 4 unit. So this is a uh, diagram. That means force field is the two dipoles and the dipoles are placed in parallel to each other. That means now here the force is positive force we are getting here finally. Positive force in the sense it will be repulsion, repulsive in nature. So simply you can observe that uh, uh, the dipoles are how to explain this is repulsive force in the sense you can cancel this. Now this is the dipole directions are like this. This is the negative charge and this is the positive charge here for the first dipole. And similarly here for the second dipole if I cancel this is a negative charge, positive charge and this is a negative charge here because both are in the same direction like this. And so now here these two positive charges are closer to each other and similarly these two negative charges are closer to each other. And so automatically there is a repulsive force between them. So that the force between them is repulsive. If we reverse the one of the dipole here, then automatically the force between them will be attracted. That means if we reverse this P2 value, well, you can observe in this derivation that here cos 0 you will get. Cos 0 means here negative sign will be there. Here minus over minus plus you will get. And in the integral, in the differentiation, you will get the negative sign. So finally, negative sign in the sense it is an attractive force you can conclude there. So that means that depends on the orientation. In the general case, if both are in the same direction, then you can conclude that the force between them will be a repulsive force like this. So that is a force between uh, two dipoles there. Theta is defined as shown in this. This is a circular ring of radius r. 
cosecer by x is equal to now our question sir find dipole moment p and the second question is find the electric field at the center actually these two calculations we already calculated we already did in the previous process now additional i am calculating find e at like x comma 0 comma 0 means on this x axis on this x axis or on the axis of the ring we need to find so these two problems we already did so we can uh, we can easily write those expressions there now additionally you need to calculate this one the electric field due to this at this uh, point so try that problem otherwise i will explain in the next class that means electric field on the axis of the ring we need to calculate so that is the problem there so now those are the some problems based on the dipole so with this uh, we finish with this dipole concept field potential and time period and how it uh, how the force acts on the dipole and is based in uniform or non uniform electric field so all the concepts related to those dipoles dipole concepts and so in the next class we will uh, sort about the gauss law gauss law and uh, electric flux and the gauss law and applications of the gauss law So for this week you have to solve up to here. That means for this week our syllabus will be from potential, uh, potential due to point charges, continuous charge distribution, and potential energy concepts, and this uh, electric dipole uh, concept. That means last week and this uh, dipole here, uh, up to dipole concepts here. This week's syllabus. So solve the, all the problems based on the dipole, uh, dipole. Uh, complete all the problems based on the dipole, and if any problem, remaining problems are there based on the potential. complete those problems cover those two topics uh, for this weekend examination